Hello and welcome to the Empower Couples Podcast, where here you get modern, non-boring relationship advice for you and your partner to communicate like pros, fight smarter, and stay on the same team no matter the challenge that you're facing. I am one of your hosts, Aaron Freeman. And I'm Jocelyn Freeman, but you all just know us as the Freemans. And today's all about having conflicting needs, and we're going to give you five principles to work through this together. Yeah, conflicting needs, right? We can have either seasons of this or it can feel like it's perpetually happening in your relationship. And wherever you fall in that, you're not alone. We hear this so often on our private sessions and then Instagram messages. And so we put out a poll and we wanted to hear about what are some conflicting needs that are either seasonal or always happening in your relationship. And so here are a few of them. One is Like one of us needs a lot of like togetherness. You know, we need time together. I want quality time. I want just you and me. And the other person is needing separateness. I need alone time. I need time with my friends. You know, I need to be able to just go out and do whatever I want with my hobbies, right? So there's this mismatch of wanting togetherness versus separateness. What's another challenge? Well, with like the five love languages, for instance, you have physical touch and quality time. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a mismatch on the way you fill your love account Mm -hmm. where one person is really needing, let's say, more physical touch and affection and another is needing, let's say, quality time Mm -hmm. or one of the other ones, you know, gifts or acts of service. And so often the need is there because you have sort of different ways that Mm -hmm. you fill your love account. So that's another need. Do you have a third one? Yep. So also one of you needing more time to talk, right? Like the end of the day, you're like, I need to talk. I need to talk about my day. I want to connect on that. And the other person's like, I need quiet time at the end of the day. I want to zone out. I want to look at my phone or I want to watch TV. And so it feels as though you're battling between I want to connect with you. I want to have a conversation and the other person feeling like they need to unwind and just have quiet time. Mm -hmm. Which kind of leads into the fourth one, because I think they're also linked. You may also have conflicting needs on working, who might be focused on the job and the career and working, Mm -hmm. and the other one may be leading the household and the kids. Yeah, focusing on family. And once again, we're not saying this is gender specific because more and more often, men are staying home and being with kids, right? Mm -hmm. So, and many women are furthering their own careers and their pursuits. So Mm -hmm. there can be a mismatch here on either side, the amount one works and is like the provider. And, you know, there's even often right now where maybe both are working, right? So in either scenario, there is this need for the amount of focus on work and providing as well as then sort of a providing for the family and creating that kind of environment. Yeah, and one more that I actually heard a lot was a mismatch in terms of wanting sexual intimacy and then emotional intimacy. Oh, yeah. Right? And so mm-hmm. this one partner's like, well, I connect by being sexually intimate. And the other person's like, I can't be sexually intimate if I don't feel emotionally connected to you, mm. right? So it feels like this tug of war and it's like the chicken and the egg situation, right? Which one comes first? <laughs> feels like the other person is just sitting there waiting for that need to be fulfilled. So we listed five that are very common there are of course more and right now even take a minute to just kind of get present to what is an example of a conflicting need that we either currently have right now in this season or it's perpetual or it you know pops up once in a while so that I can make sure to look out for what to do when this happens yeah and then we'll give you here five principles and one thing we want to note is you might want to go back and listen to two specific episodes We did one on sort of needs that men have that might not be getting expressed. And Mm -hmm. then same for women, needs that they have more unique that might not be getting expressed. Those were episodes 147 and 135. And we want you to kind of get present, as you said, to what are the particular needs that I have that are not getting expressed and not getting met. Mm -hmm. Because... That might be a place where you just feel like an underlying sense of dissatisfaction and you might not be putting the language or getting clear about what those are and that can kind of just run in the background. Now, I wanted to share a quick story, Mm -hmm. if that's okay. Sure. I remember when we first got together, one of the first books I read, I did an air quote because I actually (laughs) listened to it, was Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. Mm -hmm. You know, great book at the time because... The analogy of men being like a rubber band Hmm. really struck true for me. 
And it is pretty much that, you know, men need this certain amount of separateness. Mm -hmm. That was one of the needs here, right? And we see this when challenges arise or you have difficult conversations. You know, men seem to like pull away. So think of a rubber band stretching. And if you've read the book, you know what I'm talking about or listen to the book in this case. And for many partners of men, that feels like they're distancing. Mm. But men sort of need this stretch. And what does a rubber band do when you let it go? It comes back together. It comes back together. So it really was such a great analogy for me. And I wanted to say that because there is just inherent differences in needs for, yes, both men and women. Mm -hmm. But I want to take this a little bit further because it's not just a sex or gender difference. Mm -hmm. It really is personality. Yes. And you as an individual person are going to have very particular needs. Any one of them that we mentioned, togetherness, separateness, emotional or physical sex, the time in the day to decompress and connect, all these different things. So yes, there's that difference in male, female, and gender, but also you're just a different human being than any other human being, and mm-hmm. you're not like your partner. Mm-hmm. So I want to take this deeper to really say, yes, that's a good baseline, men and women, but what are the particular things for you as an individual person and personality that are going to just be inherently different than your partner. Yeah, and I think before we get into this first principle, I think you guys are going to love these five principles. Also, no, you can't judge that your partner's needs are weird or, you know, because they're different or, you know, I can't believe because they don't have the same need as me, (laughs) there must be something wrong. Like, you know, especially around like the emotional intimacy versus physical. If your partner prioritizes physical and they don't, quote unquote, need as much emotional intimacy, don't look that as a flaw that's part of their conditioning and their upbringing and some of that sure might be related to having a disconnected family and so maybe there is some trauma there or maybe some things that maybe weren't the most loving in the family and so maybe they push away from emotional intimacy for example but you can't judge it Mm. and your partner can feel judgment if that's ever in this space a slight little take on that is also that your partner isn't we're kind of getting to the principles but you don't want to get upset that your partner isn't meeting your needs for you because they do have a different set Mm -hmm. so it's just something to take on as we go through these principles are you getting upset because you almost make an assumption that number one your partner should be remembering what your needs are or that they should be the same Yes, basically that because I have this need, this is a fundamental need for my partner and you assume that that's something that's present for them or maybe they're even intentionally not doing. Mm -hmm. So either way, you have to get we are all different and have a little bit of some grace there. Exactly. Well said. Well, first principle of five, you guys, is we do not believe in sacrifice We believe in creativity and resourcefulness. And this is one we're ruthless about because you hear in a lot of, you know, different relationship resources, marriage is about sacrifice. And personally, this is one that just doesn't work for us, nor do we believe is required if you are creative enough, if you're resourceful enough, Mm -hmm. you know, as a silly kind of analogy, right? Would you want to sacrifice your right arm because you're just like, oh, right arm, you're not doing exactly what I want. Cut you off. No, you wouldn't. Well, my partner doesn't like my right arm. So, all right, I'll compromise. Mm -hmm. I'll cut my right arm off. (laughs) And... And obviously that's a little bit dramatic, but it is kind of like that. When you are sacrificing a part of yourself, Mm -hmm. you're not whole. Exactly. And you're not able to perform or be at your best when you're, you know, partly your integrity in a sense (laughs) is diminished. Yeah. And in real life, if you are sacrificing a need long term, okay, there might be periods of time where your partner can't fulfill a certain need. We're going to talk about that later. And so maybe you need to temporarily be like, hey, they can't fulfill this right now for whatever reasons going on for them. But if it's long term, if it is perpetual, if you are sacrificing that need, then you will eventually resent them. It's inevitable, especially if it is a core need for you, you will eventually either start to get numb and just kind of be like, well, I guess I'm going to just have to survive that and tolerate that, or you will resent them and that will come out 
in some way, shape, or form. Resentment mm. comes out. It will. It's not going to linger there yeah. silently for too long. The softer version of sacrifice is obviously compromise. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, oh, okay, yeah, we have compromise in relationships. And look, like you said, we're not about that. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna, really going to push against this overall theme. We feel that even if you use the soft version that you're compromising in places, it really is that you're just not being creative enough. Yes. And I also believe that you're looking at it more from a me and you over there. So as soon as you create that separation, there's opportunity to win and lose. Mm -hmm. There's someone has to give, and then it feels like the other person gets to take more. It feels like an imbalance. So throw all that out. You are a couple, means you are a team. So that means... Get on the same team and then be creative, get resourceful about the solution or the decision or a new thought process or a new idea that is available because they're infinite amount. Yes. I think we think too limited too mm. often. And then, as I just mentioned, you're also thinking about me over here and then you over there, which is creating, you know, separateness. So get yourself back together together. Get creative. I love that. It is creativity. And just to give you a brief example from one of our sessions recently, what was really present for one of the partners was feeling like they have to sacrifice a sense of their individual self. Like they love their children so much, right? They love their partner. They love their career. But they were feeling kind of this sadness a bit of like, I don't get time for me. I don't remember the last time I had time for just me and exercise and quiet time. And it, it lived for them like they had to just sacrifice this and deal with this and that there were no solutions because the other partner is like, well, I need your help more, right? Yeah, what I, am I supposed to do? All of it myself Exactly. Then? So it felt like a, like a lose-lose. Then when working with them, you know, and of course there were multiple elements to this conversation, but when we eventually got to the point where they understood each other and therefore could get creative a whole new possibility showed up for them for what they could do that they never saw. Mm -hmm. And outside, for us, it looked simple. For them, it felt very complex. It almost felt like it was impossible, but they eventually came up with a solution that, yes, it's going to take practice. It's going to take making sure they hold to it, but they both will get to fulfill that need. They'll both get some alone time, and it's getting more creative with their mornings, with their evenings, the way that they're operating. And not just alone time, also quality time with each other exactly. away from all the activity you know, with the kids. And we are in this conversation, obviously, way more. Maybe in the last few episodes, you've been noticing the example of kids keeps coming up. Mm-hmm. That's because we're really diving in because if you haven't heard, we're having our own child. Yes, we are. So the amount of conversations we're having with other parents that we really respect, looking at what we feel is really working as far as parenting and really being great guides to a new soul, then it really is clear that kids pick up way more on your example of how you're being and showing up and your actions rather than the words that you're saying. True. So when you're sacrificing your own self in your relationship, Literally, what example are you giving to the kids Mm. that in a relationship, number one, you're going to have to sacrifice parts of yourself. Mm. And if they look at you and see that you're not as happy and you are more passive and you're just sort of a bystander, well, they're going to feel that, too. They energetically feel that. So they don't feel that you're as engaged in the family. Mm -hmm. So it has huge impacts. You need to. Get yourself in a place where you're not sacrificing. And to be an example to your kids and your family of resourcefulness, imagine the impact that's going to have on them for the future. A resourceful child? Ooh, That's awesome. Come on. Yeah, so I love, I'm fired up from what you just shared. So really quick before going to principle two then, your assignment for this one would be, all right, what's the need that we feel we cannot both meet? How can we sit down and write out as many different ideas and solutions for this? And I promise you, if you're creative enough, if you're resourceful enough, there will be one that shows up mm-hmm. because we are infinite human beings. That's why, because we are creative. We can solve just about every solution except for flying, you know, as individuals. Like, you know, we might. I mean, I'm working on that one myself, <laughs> though, too. So no, <laughs> nothing impossible. So let's look at principle number two. And this is. If a need you have, we touched on this a little bit, is not inherent or natural for your partner, it really is your responsibility to either remind them that, hey, as we talked about, 
or I'm bringing up for the first time, there's a need for me. I just feel like it's not getting fulfilled. And then you also might have to initiate this more proactively so that your need does get met, right? Mm -hmm. And as we mentioned, this is because your partner has their own set of needs. Ideally, in a relationship, they are keeping present what you, their partner needs, but Mm -hmm. they're not always going to. So you're going to probably have to take on some additional responsibility and there's nothing wrong with this. Yeah. So a couple come to mind. So, you know, it's funny. One thing I realized early on is that Aaron, you, you know, I'm not trying to point out fingers, but it's not like natural for you to give me compliments about like how I look. Right. It, it's maybe not top of mind for you to say, oh, you're be- you look beautiful today or I love that outfit or man, you, you look sexy from exercising lately. Mm. And early on, it was kind of like, oh, he should be saying these things like I shouldn't have to ask. Mm. And the more and more we worked on just asking for what we want, not expecting each other to do things that aren't natural to each other. Instead of me looking as a sign, you don't think I'm attractive or you don't love me as much. Now, I tell you, hey, would you tell me I look pretty? Or, hey, do you love my outfit? Or have you been noticing, like, I'm working out? How's my booty look? And you always respond. Hmm. You never, like, nah. You know, you always lean into it and then I get the boost I'm looking for. And so that's one example. Another quick one, I was DMing with one of you since we did this post about needs and the partner was saying, you know, I need physical touch and my partner like could go days without a hug and I've just been wanting them to initiate to initiate. And so we were talking through it and I was like, just ask when you need a hug Mm -hmm. just say it it doesn't mean they love you less it's just not natural to them and why would we want to impose and expect something of our partner that's not natural Mm -hmm. and the reminders is a key thing you can't tell your partner once hey i have this need i know it's not natural for you I i know it's maybe not as much of a priority for you yourself I'm going to tell you this need once and then you wait months and months and they forget and they forget and now you're pissed at them. No, if it's not natural to them, you may need to remind them lovingly multiple times. Yeah, and then don't bring it up as a complaint Mm -hmm. when it's not happening. Just like you said, you just have to really get the energy of, I'm just reminding you. So obviously you're the one listening to this podcast. So you're the one that we're talking to. Mm -hmm. So obviously in the relationship... If we were talking to your partner, we would encourage them to really take on, and we're kind of getting to that further principle, that you want to listen to your partner for their needs. And of course, you're going to want to take on their requests. You're Mm going to want to put things in place so that you actually help them out. You actually help fulfill that need for them. But they're not here. You're the one listening. We're talking to you to do the things that are going to empower you as a partner. So remind them, no energy, no complaint, no blame, no pointing the finger about it. And with some gentle reminders in a healthy relationship, they're going to want to fulfill that need for you. Well said. Absolutely. You know, so just to wrap this second principle up, you can't just assume that your partner knows your need because you mentioned it a while ago or know that the need because you mentioned it, you know, it just can't be an assumption. Assumptions don't work. So reminders are helpful for your partner. Initiate them. You know, if you're needing quality time, hey, let's schedule a date for this weekend. Don't wait for them to schedule it if that's not as natural to them. Yeah, and also we do get into a place, and I've said this before, that life has this process of showing you new things that you desire. So you're always going to have, in a sense, new expectations. You can't have the assumption that I'm in a relationship and my partner is automatically going to do the things that I need. Mm -hmm. This is such a joke because, again, you're always coming up with new things. So if you think like, I shouldn't have to tell them. How is that possible? You're getting new awareness of what you need all the time. So you can't just think that, oh, in a relationship, these things just happen and then get disappointed when they're not. So, of course, this has a lot to do with assertiveness, which we talk about. So you have to be communicating these things. Well said. Okay. So what's uh, number three? Yeah. Principle number three is that both of your needs can be fulfilled with agreements and structure. Oh, you mean you don't have to sacrifice? You don't have to sacrifice. And here's the other key thing. Just saying, I'll work on that. Or yeah, yeah, let's work on that is not going to last. 
And part of why maybe your partner does what you quote unquote need for a day or a week after you tell them, but then they forget and now you're frustrated again is because you didn't have any agreements and you didn't have structure. (laughs) You guys, we can't just say things once, put nothing in place, nothing in the calendar And then, you know, just hope it's going to work out. You've got to have some structure for your life to make sure these are sustained. Yeah, because most of the time you're talking about a new pattern and a new habit. Both of you have ways that you're operating now, habits and patterns. So if you're asking for something different, you have to overcome that already default, that already dominant pattern and habit that you have. And you got to do things. That doesn't happen. You have to work at it. You're going to kind of mess it up. You're not going to put it in place right away. This is like any skill. This is like any sport. This is like anything where you have to practice it to bring up a new habit. This is very similar. I'm going to say something bold before we give you some examples of creating structure. You also cannot deny your partner's need and just say, nope, not going to be able to fulfill that. Sorry, take it or leave it. This is who I am. Hmm. If you did that at work, you would be fired. So why wouldn't you be, quote unquote, fired from your relationship then? I know that's a a bit of a bold statement, but why would you ever deny your partner's need completely? Now, instead of it being an all or nothing thing where you basically are just like, nope, can't do that. Or, oh, I did it for a day. Isn't that enough? Like, shouldn't you be happy? Why is it that you have to, you know, bring it up again a week later instead of that? You've got to have agreements that work for both of you. Mm -hmm. And it might not be, for example, let's say maybe you're the type of partner that you need three hours of quality time every night. Like your dream would be no phones, no interruptions, just three hours of quality time for you. Well, if your partner needs some alone time, that might not work. So it might not be everything that you want, all three hours, but if you create the right agreement and the right structure, it can be a blend of the two of them. And that goes back to kind of the first principle around getting creative enough. So Aaron, do you want to go more into what we mean by agreements and what structure would look like? I'll have you do that. The thing I wanted to point out here is where couples get stuck is they focus on the activity. Hmm. I want You said it, but I wanted to say it more specifically. Mm-hmm. Don't get stuck on your need being fulfilled being done in a particular way or activity. Mm. Your need is an emotion. So fulfilling on a need like connection or quality time or love or respect, that's what you want to hone in on. And how you get resourceful and creative, going back to principle one, is being open to the many different ways in which that can get expressed through action, through words, through activity. Many couples get stuck on, well, as you just said, the activity, let's put our phones away. Well, you want to feel connected. So as a partner, I could say, well, oh, that doesn't work as well for me, but I know you want to be connected. What if we did this to mm-hmm. feel connected? Mm-hmm. That's how you get creative and resourceful. Yeah, well said. Okay, so then what this would look like with structure, because again, you can't just say, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. It would look like putting it in your calendar. <laughs> I mean, seriously, if, if, for example, quality time has been a pain point for you both, say, okay, we're going to do a date night every other week. Well, don't just think that's going to happen Because life goes by very quickly. You're going to get busy. Other things are going to fill your calendar. You have to put it in your calendar and honor it as if you would a doctor's appointment. So same thing with the date nights. If you need alone time, put it in the calendar. Do you need to hire someone to help? What do you need? Even alone time. Do you schedule in alone time? Hmm. So scheduling is a huge piece of structure, but also visual reminders. Do you need sticky notes? You know, (laughs) let's say you uh, forget that your partner needs hugs. Maybe you do a sticky note when you're brushing your teeth and it's like, hey, give your partner a hug. Like, why do we just rely on our memory? Our memory fails us, you guys. As smart as you consider yourselves, don't rely on your memory. Maybe you need a reminder that pops up on your phone. And especially if it is a need that isn't natural to you, if it is important to your partner, do something, a sticky note, calendar reminder, you know, something that pops up on your phone. Uh, I mean, there's so many different ideas of what you can do to have those reminders. Side note, it made me think of Joe Dispenza because we've been listening to him a lot. 
And he would say, that would be a waste of your brain power. To try and remember. Yeah, you don't need to waste your brain power on memory. Mm -hmm. That'll just be there. You want to be setting your brain power and focus on your vision and your future. That's that's coming from him, right? Yeah. So I think we do a great job of this because I don't rely on my mind to basically remember anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's in a calendar. There's lots of reminders, you know, the phone, the computer, just all different kinds of ways. And that frees me up. I feel free. And most of the time, I think I'm fulfilling your needs because of these things we put in place have also become habits and new patterns. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say, don't waste your your memory <laughs> or waste your brain power and just trying to remember. We got we got devices. We got apps for that. Yes, exactly. And two things came to me. One, you may want to schedule sex. Like, let's say that's a point of tension. I know it sounds odd, but let's say you have mismatched desires for frequency, but you both want to agree on, hey, let's start with two times a week having sex, which I, I know you might hear that and go, gosh, Freemans, isn't that sterile? Isn't that, you know, just kind of weird? No, not if you're especially trying to get back into momentum and you have kids and you have all these other things going on. If you schedule in, hey, Tuesdays, we go into the bedroom, we don't turn on the TV, we don't have our phones, and we just do whatever turns each other on. And you do that twice a week. So I just want you to consider scheduling sex, which by the way, we're friends with many people who are specialists and experts in sex and intimacy, and they are huge advocates of scheduling it in. Yeah, because when you know it's going to happen, you also look forward to it. Yep. There's an excitement there. A second thing to schedule is to schedule time to work on your relationship in an intentional and empowering way. And guess what? We have a way to do that for free coming up. We've only announced it today on social media and with Within a few minutes, almost a hundred of you registered. So drum roll, we are hosting a free web class on July 20th. We had said a couple months ago when we did one that it was going to be the last one of the year, but we're just literally getting so many DMs, emails, questions from you all. We can tell you're hungry for tools to work on your relationship in an intentional and empowering way, not a way that feels like, gosh, this is hard and it feels like we're just focusing on problems. So the web class is called Communication Mastery. Ooh. Four skills you must acquire to understand each other's needs, create win-win solutions, and deepen your emotional intimacy. So you can register at onlinecouplesworkshops.com. So that does have an S. You can also, you know, go to our Instagram page and it'll be in the show notes as well. But go register. It's July 20th again and it's onlinecouplesworkshops.com. Yeah, and I think we're going to be limited to 300 people. We maxed it out before, so make sure you get registered. It will be limited, even though it will be on Zoom, mm -hmm. be at 300. So let's move on. Actually, we can't wait to see you there. I just mm -hmm. wanted to say that. Really love doing these. So let's move to principle number four here. And that is that your partner likely cannot fulfill all your needs in all seasons. That one's so important. Now, you really do have to have outside resources and outlets. You can't expect your partner to play every single role for you. I mean, that puts a lot of pressure, overwhelm, burden on them. And it's really not what Fair. your romantic partner really is there for. Mm -hmm. not, not everything. So, for instance, you, know, you might want to have, let's say, close friends that are specifically there for you to like laugh and be silly with i know we want those times in our relationships but imagine just having friends where you're just you're totally free like no concerns you're laughing you silly you might have some friends for like deep philosophical conversations that's that's what i love to have right so there are particular friends and even individuals that i know i can call up to have those kind of deep spiritual and philosophical conversations because you don't always want to hear those, like, or you just well, don't have different. time. They give you or... a different take on yeah, it, you yeah. know, and especially because a lot of those are men for you. They give you a different perspective than I can give you. Yeah. Sometimes and I don't, this is, I haven't really expressed it this way. You just don't actually have the same level of desire to go into it as I do. And like we said before, these are just, these are one of the areas, mm -hmm. right? That's something that for me, top two things of why I'm alive and why I'm a human being is those types of conversations. And there's nothing wrong, but 
for you, that's it's not that strong of a desire. Mm-hmm. I know we have those, but just one of these places where you have to see like your partner isn't as interested in certain things as you. So have outside resources. Also, some other places you might have a spiritual teacher or even say a personal trainer mm-hmm. where those people are there for your growth in spirituality or your particular health growth. Yeah. You know, your partner doesn't have to be your nutritionist mm-hmm. and your accountability Motivator, partner yeah. yeah, for the gym. So just start to look at these places where you can almost kind of take that burden and what we mean by that is really like an expectation and assumption, right? Mm-hmm. Off your partner and free up some time and, be, uh, and energy between both of you. Yeah. Let's say, for example, because again, this is seasonal too, right? Like yeah. if your partner is starting a new job or maybe mm. you just had a baby, That's true. you know, something where they have their attention on other places that they're trying to do for you guys and for the family. And so maybe they're a little bit less available emotionally. Well, instead of resenting them for that season, go, okay, like you mentioned friends or having a therapist or a confidant or a teacher, but also within yourself. I can't emphasize enough that if there's a need you're constantly going to your partner for, perhaps you also have to look at where am I not fulfilling this for myself? Right. And that's where I'm so grateful. And I know we've mentioned this on a few podcasts, but that we have our morning ritual. You know, our time where we meditate, we journal, we listen to podcasts and and YouTube videos and meditation tracks, and we turn inward and we look at, okay, if I'm needing to feel a release of emotion, Mm. where am I expecting you to be that? And I'm not being that for myself. Mm -hmm. So yes, friendships, teachers, confidants, but also you. You have to be able to fulfill your own needs too sometimes. And again, yeah, just not resent your partner if they can't be that person for you in the exact way you need them to. I'm not saying... Mm -hmm. Or season, as you said. Exactly. Or like, oh, I can't talk to them about anything right now because they're stressed about work. No, it just might not be daily. You know, maybe they're really overwhelmed. And so it can't be a daily conversation with you about your emotions. So how important is communication then around this? Oh, you have to communicate them so open. And actually, I love that you said that because let's say, you know, your partner has a certain need that you can't fulfill right now. You could say, hey, I really do know, you know, you're needing blank. And I want to fulfill that for you. However, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed or focused on this and this and this. Here's what I can provide for you. Wow. How can I help you also get that need fulfilled either with yourself or maybe we need to hire someone or, you know, hey, do you want to go out with friends? Hmm. So you got to be in communication as like, here's my need. Here's your need. What can we do for each other? What can we not expect from each other right now? Wow. Like that amount of transparency is so key. What a partner. That's amazing (laughs) to be that proactive in your communication. It also shows your partner that you're being very conscious Mm. and considerate of the needs that you know they have. Mm -hmm. One slight nuance I wanted to add to this as well. You could have the most positive intent and you could seek out these people being friends or particular teachers for whatever need it is that you see that you need for yourself. But if you just start going and doing that without communicating to your partner, hey, here's a need I see for myself and this is where I can see I can have someone else help me fulfill that need. If you don't do that, there can be this sense of maybe jealousy or tension that arises because your partner might start to feel that, oh, what am I not good enough Mm. or... Why are they seeking that sort of need outside of the relationship? Mm. Now, it's a different conversation if we start talking about sexuality yeah, we're not talking about or that. like even an emotional need where if you have another person that's fulfilling a emotional intimacy mm. for you, that's a dangerous place to go. But in these other places of needs, just express them so your partner doesn't have these questions that like come wondering. up or feel a sense of jealousy. And I know it sounds weird to say, But you've kind of brought this up to me at times where when I'm with certain people, well, it's basically anyone else. Sometimes you feel a little sad that the way I show up with how happy, joyful, expressive, curious, playful I am with other people, you're kind of like, why don't I get that all the time? Mm. And so just wanted to put that in there as 
pretty like advanced awareness. But if you share with your partner, here's a need, and I don't expect this to be fulfilled by you, and here's where I see I can fulfill this for myself, it really just keeps you on the same page and gets you outside of this kind of feeling of tension or jealousy around it. Yeah, so it's kind of like, hey, so I'm going to go out with friends on Sunday mornings for brunch, or, oh, I'm going to hire this trainer because I know I I need to feel motivated, or I'm actually going to start to see this therapist. Yeah, like I think showing your partner this is why I'm implementing this, and so they aren't going like, oh, I'm noticing you're spending more time with friends. It's letting them know what need that's fulfilling. And of course, inviting them into it. You're not being like, I'm doing all this and you're not included. (laughs) But you're just being considerate of like maybe the season that they're going through. So let's go into the fifth principle, which might be some of your guys' favorite. It is probably one you have never heard. I'm going to let Aaron explain it. But it's called the law of reciprocity. And reciprocity, well, two places this actually comes from. One, the author Robert Cialdini, he wrote Influence. And Influence actually has some main principles, reciprocity being one of them. Now, in this scenario, we're kind of talking about in the realm of marketing and psychology, how do you influence people? And he's not doing this from a manipulation standpoint. But in reciprocity, if you give to someone, there is a natural feeling of receiving back or someone wanting to give back to you because of what they receive from you. This is the law of reciprocity. In even like religion, it's the law of uh, sowing and reaping, Mm. right? Very similar thing. So then that gets us into a place of actually, not as it just psychological, but it's more even a universal law. So I've studied some universal laws of reciprocity, which is very similar that out in the world, on the planet, in the universe, you actually see the same type of give and take. Even think about air, right? We have a reciprocity relationship in a sense with plants. You know, we take in oxygen and we exhale carbon dioxide. The plant takes in carbon dioxide and gives off oxygen. So we have this relationship with plants and just in everything. So this is a really base not only human psychological, but also Nature. universal, natural law of reciprocity. And you can utilize this in your relationship. Yes. So often we can hold out on fulfilling our partner's need because we don't feel like ours is being met. Yeah. This is against the law of reciprocity. So you can actually use it to your sort of mutual benefit. Yeah. So if there are certain ways to influence your partner positively, there are also ways to influence your partner negatively. And one of those ways <laughs> would be to hold out. Like if your needs not being met, you can kind of unconsciously be like, fine, I'm not going to then fulfill on theirs. Now, we're not saying you're a mean person, but just if we go through seasons where we aren't as conscious, we aren't as intentional, we might be more stingy. Mm, Good word. Right. We might be more self-focused. My needs, my needs, my needs. And so we take our attention off of our partner's needs. So the opposite of that would be to be generous. Oh, wow. And so if you are generous with your partner, you give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, let's say you know a certain need for them and you fulfill it. We're not saying setting aside your own, but you're focusing on giving generosity and you do it not you know, being spiteful, being like, okay, I'm going to do this and they better return my need. Because again, you have to communicate your needs. But if you're generous, you're showing up your best self daily. You're doing those things that you know matter to them. Very, very, very likely, if you at least have clued them into your needs, the Mm -hmm. law of reciprocity says they will return them. Mm -hmm. maybe not in the exact form that you're looking for. And that's why you even want to give your partner detail, you know, like, Hey, it would be really cool if you did it like this, or Hey, this would be special to me. So again, don't look for like the specifics like Aaron said, but it's like, wow, I see your effort. You know, it might not be the exact form. I would prefer it, but I see that you're trying. Mm -hmm. I want to expand it just a bit. I know this is about relationships, but the universal principle could also be called cause and effect Mm -hmm. where, when you put, when you give something outwardly, you almost have this expectation that it's going to return from you, but it doesn't have to be from the same person that you gave to. So this is a change in attitude. It's a change in energy that even just imagine giving to your partner more, 
you actually have this expectation from the universal laws that your need is going to get fulfilled and you can hold yourself open and it gets fulfilled from some place you weren't even planning on it being fulfilled from. Yeah, and I don't want you to hear that and think that, again, we're thinking of you having outside relationships yeah. from that. But you're just saying, right, like if we're generous with our partner, but also all people, mm -hmm. there will be good that returns to you. And again, we're saying this because not only do we know, especially me from past relationships, if I wasn't getting my needs fulfilled, I was holding out. Mm -hmm. You know, and I didn't consider myself a malicious person, but it was almost like a game. Yeah. You know, like I have to be honest, like it was somewhat of a game. Like maybe if I hold out long enough, it'll wake them up and they'll realize <laughs> yeah. why they're doing it. And that's just not going to work. That's going to create this very conditional relationship between you two. And especially if you two are kind of, I don't know, both being a little bit more stubborn and inflexible, mm -hmm. you'll both be holding out. And yeah. then you're both going to be having your needs unmet and that doesn't feel good. And that's going to lead to distance, disconnect. It'll be like an erosion. An erosion of your connection. And so mm -hmm. with this one, like we said, the law of reciprocity, you focus on being generous, focus on your partner's needs, fulfilling them. And again, clue your partner into what you need. Part of being generous is being loving in your communication to them. And this law of reciprocity, if you're consistent, not for a day, oh, I did it for a day, Freemans, and then they didn't return, so I'm giving <laughs> up. No, we're talking about weeks, months, years, being consistent. There will be good that returns. We're very likely, we'd bet a good amount of money on it for you. Yep. So, Aaron, what, would, what else do you want to say in closing here? Well, just we'll summarize. So, the principles here, if you're feeling that you have conflicting needs... We covered five principles to really work through this. The first one being, we don't believe in sacrifice. So look for places to get more creative and resourceful as a team. The second one is if you have a particular need, it is your responsibility to remind and initiate that for yourself. Like actually bring it up and not expect your partner just to know. The third one is, both your needs can be fulfilled if you have the right agreements and the right structure in place. Number four, your partner likely cannot fulfill all needs in all seasons. So keeping that in mind in ways to communicate how you can have needs continuously be fulfilled. Maybe not from you, maybe just not right now. And then lastly, principle five is the law of reciprocity. Lead with your own generosity, especially in your relationship, and see how that starts to pay dividends. Mm, and with that, also make sure you go register for the web class now before you forget for any reason. And again, that is at online couples workshops with an S.com. The link is also in the show notes. That's July 20th. It's going to be a communication mastery class for skills. You're going to love it. It's going to make such a difference. So again, go to online couples workshops.com. And one last ask, I had mentioned in the last few episodes that I was going to do this for the month. It's sort of a game or goal that we have for the podcast. But if you're getting great value from this podcast, how we feel that return is actually in reviews. And so we're playing a game to really up our own reviews. We would love for you to play in this game with us. We want to get another, let's go for 100 reviews. If you listening to this right now have not yet reviewed, I am asking that you pause or even before this ends here, you just go to the show tab and scroll to the bottom, leave a review. We've been loving reading the ones so far and it really does help the podcast get seen by other couples, heard by other couples. So that means you're having an impact in the lives of other couples mm -hmm. as well. So yes, please go review the podcast. And that's really all I wanted to say. With that, everyone, we love you all. Thank you for the engagement, the messages on Instagram, you know, engaging with the content. Every time you send a note that you love the podcast, it keeps us going. Mm -hmm. You know, it tells us, okay, you're listening. It's resonating. So please keep that up. We love hearing from you. And with that, everyone, we love you guys. And we'll talk to you on the next episode.